So there are two popular questions that you guys tend to ask me every once in a while. And the first one is, what is the theme that I use for my VS Code? The next is, what are the extensions that I use that drive me crazy every single episode? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at the theme. The theme for me is pretty important. I started learning to code on Sublime. That was a really cool theme that I liked. I liked the way that everything just kind of stood out on its own. And so that's what I've brought over with me to VS Code. So if you go to the little settings cog down here and you go to your color theme, all this is is the same sublime sort of theme that there is. I have here a Laravel project so that we can take a look at stuff. Let's go to the resources is app.blade.php and as you can see this is the same sort of setup that the old sublime used to have before they got rid of the more classic monokai theme so that's the theme that i'm using so there are approximately 16 different extensions that i use and one of the main ones which is more of a stylistic thing for me than anything if you take a look at this tree view structure that we have, we just have these sort of like little arrows, which it does have the PHP elephant in there. But, you know, everything is pretty generic in terms of icons. So what I like to do is I like to go to the extensions and type in VS Code Icons. OK, and it's this first one here. Go ahead and open that up. And all it does is it really just kind of gives the icons for the files or the folders or anything that's specific to those things. So let's go ahead and install it. We'll select VS Code icons up here, and that should be good. Let's check this out. Okay, so now you see on the tree view, we actually have the logo for NPM, logo for Composer, for Git. We have different types of files, and every file has its own ending. So this is a PHP instead of the elephant, which is kind of cool, I think. And that's just basically what I use, and it helps me navigate. So even if I don't want to just type it in and I want to specifically go and look for stuff, that usually helps me do that. Now, the next thing that I do, it's a lot more specific to Laravel, and this is called the Laravel Extension Pack. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up and take a look. So basically, all it is is an extension pack that has 10 different extensions that we could use, and they're all very helpful. I've been using this for years. When I first started using it, I think maybe there were five. And now, as you can see, we have 10. So let's go ahead and take a look at them specifically. Let's go ahead and install it. OK, so the first one, it's Laravel Blade Snippets, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It just gives you the syntax highlighting for it. If we go to our app.blade.php again, OK, you see that this was white before we installed it and now they're green. So it does add that syntax highlighting for us. OK, and let's take a look at the next one, which is Laravel snippets. And these are just basic Laravel snippets. So they give you a little example down here. So you can start typing something and it'll show up. They give you a little example here, but if we go to our web routes, That's what that's doing. So if we go ahead and type in, we'll start typing in route. You see all of these here. This is because of that extension. So route get. It gives you the basic snippet of the route and just different commands that we end up calling within our projects. So let's head back. Let's see what else we have here. Laravel Artisan. Now this allows you to run Artisan commands within Visual Studio Code. So when we do PHP Artisan Migrate, stuff like that, that's what this extension is allowing us to do. We also have a quick jump to view. Let's take a look at that. As you can see here, it just allows you when you're creating different things in the route and you see how it's underlined right there, it'll allow you to control and click it and it'll take you to that specific view. So let's take a look. get or actually we'll do view and then our view will be app dot blade dot php or just app so now you see that it's underlined and so now it tells you alt and click and now that'll bring us to our app dot blade dot php
Okay, so that's a cool little extension that comes with it. Go to view and the same thing with the controller. Let's go ahead and quickly create a new controller. And we'll make it resourceful so that we can have some routes to work with. Uh, let me get rid of this. And now we can do, we'll take this. Okay, we'll just call it app index. Let's go ahead and it is go to definition. We need to import that. I thought I named it user controller. Guess I named it user. Let's uh, change that up. User controller. This will be user controller. Let me open that up. User controller. So now we can close this. HTTP controllers. Of course, spelled it wrong. Okay, so now let's try it. Okay, so as you can see, if you hover over here, it tells you exactly where that file is located. And now if you right click, you can go to the definition of that. So that's how you can go straight to that controller. That's what that extension is allowing you to do. We've gone so far that I've forgotten which extension it was. This. Okay, Laravel go to controller. Okay, and then there's also Laravel extra IntelliSense which is basically all of these little things that keep popping up. Okay, so as you type is when things will start getting filled out and that's what this IntelliSense is doing. It's just built on top of the IntelliSense that's standard with VS Code. Okay, another one we have is .env and this is for our .env files. This allows you to have that syntax. So before we installed it, our .env was just one color and now it is, it's got some highlighting in it for the colors to kind of separate stuff and makes it easier for you to navigate through it. What's next is the editor config for VS Code. And this just allows you to override some of the settings in your editor config. So if you wanted to use tabs instead of spaces, it allows you to do that right through the, see the indent style, indent size. And this is a config file within VS Code your editor config, which is right here. And this will allow you to change up what you need to change up for your default settings. Fantastic. The next extension that I use, and I do admit that I forget that I have it, but it is a good one. This one is duplicate action. VS Code duplicate allows you to create another file. It'll probably be better for me to just show you. We'll go ahead and install it. Okay, and we'll go to our tree view. Let's say we have this app.blade.php and I want to create another one. This one, when you right click it, it has this duplicate file or directory. You go ahead and click that and now you can name your file whatever you want to name it. It's also going to create it in the same folder that the one you're duplicating it from is. We can just go ahead, take this and end it off. And so now we have a duplicate of that index page. That's what that extension is doing for us. The next extension that I use is PHP namespace resolver. Okay, and it's right up here. This one, what this one basically does is it allows you to import and expand your class. So that's what it allows you to do. Let's go take a look. We'll install it and we'll head to our route. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one. If I right click the user controller, we have some more things in our menu. One of them is to import class. Okay. And now that brings it right up top and that's how I import it. The other thing you can do with this is if you don't want to right click it, you can just get rid of the letter and it'll pop up this menu. Go ahead, press enter. And that also imports it up top. Okay, so that's how I import stuff automatically when I'm coding. The next one I came across not too long ago was these brackets. 
So let's say I wanted to add some brackets here. You know, that's fine. Let's say I add some more. That's fine. And they're pretty much just going to be either of those two colors. But the extension is called Rainbow Brackets. And it's the first one right here. As you can see, 1.2 million downloads. So it's very popular. And what this allows you to do is have different colors to open and close your brackets. Let's just go ahead and install it. OK, and now we head back to our index page. You see, we have two different sets of colors and that's much nicer. It allows you to find your opening and closing brackets. Now, another one that I like to use is called Laravel Blade Spacer. And this one is good for me because what it does is it allows you to automatically set this sort of space in between your brackets. And I like that. I think that's good. It makes things a lot cleaner for me. So let's go ahead and install that. So now when we do brackets, you can see it gives us that nice little perfect space right in between. Also, so it makes it nice and clean for us. I tend to use Tailwind. I use it more than I would use, let's say, Bootstrap. But Bootstrap has its own extension that you can use for little snippets for it. Right here we have a div. And we'll just do that. We'll add a class. So let's say I want margin top of four. As you can see, nothing happens. We have no idea what that is. That's fine. If you know Tailwind classes off the top of your head, then this will be just fine for you. But let's say you want to have a little drop down whenever you start typing in stuff for your Tailwind classes to make sure that you're getting the correct syntax for it. What I use is this Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, and that's exactly what that does. OK, it gives you a drop down for your syntax. So let's go ahead and install that and see the difference. OK, we'll try it again. We'll say We'll have a div and blah, blah, blah. Now in our class, you can see we're starting to get some drop downs. So let's say margin top or text. OK, you can see all of this stuff here is now tailwind classes. So text, right? BG gray. And now you can see it's a drop down. So that's all that that is. It's giving you those classes really easy. It gives you the good syntax for it. And so that you can look to see. And I like also that it shows you, let's say you're doing colors, that it shows you what the colors kind of look like before you even put it in, which I think is nice. So that's something else that I use. The last thing I use on a regular basis, and if you're using Vue.js, whether or not you're using it often, this is still a really good tool to use this Vitor. And this is by PineWoo. It's very popular, 9.16 installs. Let's go ahead, install it, and let's take a look and see what it does. So basically, it's just a language server for Vue. Okay, it gives you the syntax highlighting, semantic highlighting. So pretty much what our Laravel packages did for Laravel, this is for the Vue.js side of it. So again, syntax highlighting, semantic highlighting, snippet, emmet. And let's say I was to disable this right now and we go and look at some view pages. This doesn't even have the view extension for it. Everything just it's just blah. Everything is just a white color. It has no definition to it. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. Go ahead and enable it. Go back. And as you can see, now we have the icon for view. Let's say the dashboard. Now you can see there's a difference in the color. You see the semantic highlighting. This is a very useful tool when you have Vue.js in your projects. So that about wraps it up for me. I am pretty sure we have about 17. I'll know at the final count exactly what it is, and I'll be sure to put that in the title of the video. But I think there's about 17, 16 or 17 different extensions that we use. I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. If you are, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up as it really does help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.